Ruiz. It's Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi, everybody. Happy Batman Day. Uh, at least that's what uh, the social media tells me that tomorrow, Saturday, uh, what is tomorrow? Saturday, September 19th is National Batman Day. So today uh, we're looking at a piece. I actually started this over the summer and they got busy, never, never got to finish it, but I thought I'd noodle this a little bit. And what I'm doing, not, it's not really a recreation uh, of a go of Batman number one. It's more of a just an homage to the period of Golden Age Batman, uh, and that sort of square jawed, um, that great looking, uh, really epitomized by the Dick Sprang art of the fifties, um, which is a, a a version of Batman that I've always loved. So uh, I thought I would uh, do something along that vintage uh, of my own design. So uh, that logo, of course, that's the Golden Age Batman logo. And uh, yes, I did that by hand. Uh, of course, I used a ruler for some of the lettering. Some of that block lettering is, is ruled in, but the Batman figure behind it and the bat emblem that is all uh, that is all done by hand. So I have the nice open space where I'm gonna go in and I'm going to draw a Dick Sprang inspired Batman. Make sure that you can see this. And, and as usual, I probably won't get to finish this guy all in one sitting, the, the whole piece all in one sitting. But um, hopefully I'll get him far enough along that uh, he'll give me something to post in, uh, in celebration of National Batman Day. Um, and I'm sure all of Facebook will be, uh, Facebook and Instagram will be loaded with everybody's version of, uh, of the Caped Crusader. Um, and I know a, a lot of people, most people, uh, especially the younger generation out there, really likes the the grimmer, darker Batman. Uh, you know, probably best captured by uh, uh, Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill in the '70s, and then again by Frank Miller in the uh, '80s with the Dark Knight Returns. Um, but I always love this Batman. I always love the. I, I think they're almost totally separate characters. Uh, it's hard to say that it's hard to view them both as the as the same character because they they're just so different in tone in what the the series is about and it's tough to say that uh, it's it's really comparing apples and oranges as they say. So now one of the the key things about this version of Batman is that he is there's a relative simplicity to him uh you can't over render this guy otherwise you you lose you really lose the the look you can't go in with a bazillion little lines on uh, on batman um it's a little early for the face but i can't resist and i want to make sure i get in there because the face is really part of what sells this batman he always has that the those crescent shaped eyes that almost look like they're smiling uh he has of course the big heavy black shadow on the front of the cowl one plane of the nose is chiseled out and then the shadow consumes the rest of the face and also a bit of the forehead And I say it's a bit early to get into that because normally I like to flesh out more of the figure, but I want to make sure to, to take you through that little piece of him since it's so important. And this Batman, of course, has the high cheekbones. And even though he is the, uh, you know, he works at night, he fights crime, he always had a good time doing it. So there was always a little bit of a twinkle in the eye and a little bit of a smile to uh, 
to him, uh, which I think uh, something that's missing from many comics is the fun. A lot of angst, but not much fun. I would think that, yeah, I know Batman lost his parents, but he's Batman and he does enjoy it. He does enjoy what he does. I think that is key, key to the character. Uh, he has a nice square jaw. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to turn him into Dick Tracy. A little bit of a neck, maybe a little bit of a cast shadow underneath the neck. Not crazy about the mouth, so I will nuke that. Maybe a little bit more of a smile. A bit more of an unambiguous smile. There we go. Now, yeah, I could go in. This Batman also had a nice big utility belt, the big yellow utility belt with the little pods, whatever these things were, going all the way around. I know nowadays everybody likes the pouches. I was okay with the pods. Yeah, I know it's it's not realistic for all the stuff he's carrying uh, in that in that utility belt. But thing is, if you're looking for realism, Batman may not be your thing. And if you think Batman is realistic, oh boy, then uh, you may be one of those people that uh, comics has done some damage to. All right, let's tighten up his torso here. This Batman, of course, had the simplified bat logo, no yellow oval yet. I'm just looking to see how many points he has on that bat. The bat was relatively small, although it seems to change size from artist to artist. I don't know if there was a set number of points. I may check that later. So he is looming on a rooftop. I'm gonna do a video on, uh, on buildings and architecture. And I, I may have promised that before, but I, it's, it's on my list of things that I wanna do. And I, I think that's, a, that's an important topic, believe it or not buildings, architecture, and uh, how to do them uh, right, and uh, a few tips on, on how to get that done. Um, of course, every year at the Kubert School, uh, one of the big hurdles is backgrounds. Uh, first of all, just getting students to use backgrounds, but then getting them to do backgrounds right. And... There's really no way around it. The, the secret to backgrounds is reference. Reference. And the, the same is true for buildings. Um, you want to draw good buildings? You have to look at some buildings. Uh, it's just like anything else. You want to draw good people, good figures, good characters? You have to look at people. You have to spend some time drawing people. So I want to... Bring Batman's arm around this way. I don't know if I want him to look like he is leaning on his leg that way. Maybe I'll bring the arms up a little bit more. And that's okay to keep tweaking your figure. You want to get the, the best possible pose out of him. I may, I may ink this... You know, I, I, a lot of times when I uh, when I draw these things that I do just for fun, um, I always have the intentions of, of going a little further than I do with them. And then what happens is I end up selling these. So uh, I end up selling them before I ink them or do anything with them. People just buy the pencil version. Um, but nowadays, you know, every, I, I scan everything and I keep, every, I keep a scanned copy of everything. So uh, I could always, even if I did sell it, I could always uh, print out a blue line and ink that. 
Now, uh, it's still been a busy season for me. Still wrapping up the last few pages of Die Kitty Die, which I hope to do this weekend. I'm planning to do this weekend. So that will be it for Die Kitty Die this year. Well, we're, we're also doing uh, a few specials for Die Kitty Die, which were part of the Kickstarter. So I'll be doing that too. And uh, once again, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I always say I'm going to do this, but I'll, I'll link in the uh, description below to uh, DieKittyDie.com. If anybody wants Die Kitty Die books or the Die Kitty Die figurine, um, uh, please go to DieKittyDie.com and uh, check it out. Check her out and uh, get all the Die Kitty Die stuff you want. Uh, we got we got we got lots. And I want to bring the cape. His cape in this vintage always looked kind of solid. It, it, it almost seemed to hang like in one piece, which was kind of cool. And I do prefer it to the sometimes ridiculous thing that the cape has turned into in, in some modern versions. I mean, some, some artists really take the cape and the ears too far. I'm not a big fan of the gigantic ears. Um, not that they need to be small Adam West ears, but I, I'm not a big fan when they have these gigantic, yeah, I know, Bernie Wrightson. Um, but I, I wasn't crazy about those ears. I, I prefer more conservative ears. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Robin in here somewhere, but maybe not in this video. I just wanna give us Batman for Batman Day. You know, he always has the uh, the deep shadow on the trunks. And I like to indicate some of the folds on those trunks. And I am definitely of the mind. I like trunks. I like trunks on my Batman and on my Superman. And if you find them too ridiculous, if you're not a trunks person, you know, maybe you've outgrown comics. Maybe you're too old for this stuff. A little bit more of a cast shadow just to lift his head up. And let's chisel square off his chin a little bit more. Let's clean that up. So now that school has started and Die Kitty Die is, is wrapping up, I'll have more time to do um, more videos more regularly. So uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying these. And if you do, please let me know in the uh, comments below. And please let me know by clicking like. Uh, like really, likes really help me out. So please, uh, please, if you're watching this and you enjoy this, uh, please, uh, please click like for me. And and as always, please leave a comment. I try to answer each and every comment. Uh, if I've missed any, because sometimes a, a lot of comments will come in at all hours. Uh, if I've missed any, please uh, let me know. So Batman here is just about done. Just have to finish off that hand. And... Uh, he will be ready. So what do you think of how Batman is turning out? Does he look dynamic? Does he look cool? I'll of course post the final piece and hopefully you guys will see it on social media. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, as I said before, please click like, please subscribe, and don't forget to come back for the next video. And I will see you Maybe not the same bat time, but definitely the same bat channel. Keep drawing, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.